today I have brought back, actually, no, she requested to come back. Uh, what we have, who we have here is Julia Waller, who is the unique ability specialist. And in my opinion, the guru of unique ability development. And she's a coach with strategic coach. Uh, Julia, you're back. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andre. Always a pleasure to chat with you. So just a brief outline, episode 51, we talked about your unique ability, not you, strategic coach, unique ability concept and how you're the guru and why it's important. We even talked about parenting and entrepreneurs, and then you were back to discuss the Clifton strengths, a, a talent assessment that you also use in unique ability. But today you wanted to come back and involve or deeper dive into my unique ability and best habits. I don't think we talked a lot about the best habits the last time. So did you want to give a little explanation? We have the unique ability statement. I think we've talked about uh, maybe a little brief summary of what the unique ability statement is and what the best habits are. Absolutely. So while you know my passion is people's understanding and getting really, really clear on people's unique ability, which is your unique set of talents, sort of the unique recipe that makes up who you are. And then you and I share the love for people's strengths and talents. And uh, so people can maximize their contribution and have amazing lives and really make an impact on other people and, and also be in alignment with who they really are. So part of our, you know, at Strategic Coach, our core fundamental concept, one of them, the main one I think is at the center of everything is unique ability. The more you focus on what you're really good at and love doing, gives you energy, you really want to keep getting better, the better results that you have. And then you build the team around you of other who's who can do the other things. So in order to figure out what your unique ability is, we have a really deep dive process. We go over it in our unique ability uh, book and notebook that we offer um, through Strategic Coach. And that you um, co-wrote. That I co-wrote. Yeah. I had a lot of, I was trying to put as much coaching in that book and notebook as possible and walk people through all the steps so that people could go and do this process on their own. Um, so the, the, the deep dive part of the process is really figuring out, uh, we get a lot of inputs with Colby and Clifton strengths and print. Mm -hmm. And then, and we send out letters to ask people about your unique ability. And then what you try to do, which is not always the easiest process is to articulate what are your 10 best unique ability habits. Dan called them that years and years ago. And really Dan it's Sullivan, you, the founder, Dan of Sullivan, founder of strategic coach, along with his amazing uh, partner and wife, Bob Smith. Um, your best habits are really description of your talents, of your natural talents, the things that you're excellent, amazing at, and you love doing. And so we used to write kind of one sentence for each of those best habits. And over the years, as I've been doing this more and more with people, we tend to go a little bit deeper. We write a whole paragraph now. We write, what is it that you're actually doing? How are you doing it? And what's the result of what you do? So I just find that fascinating. And I've got your best habits here that you've gone through the process several times and keep evolving them and we'll keep evolving them together. I call and them refining, refining, refining. Because like as that. I deal, deal, deep, deep dive more into my unique ability and I'm starting to remove tasks that are not my unique ability, I'm actually seeing that what I'm now enjoying, there's parts that I don't like. So I'm refining and getting it more clarity as we go. That's forward. wonderful. I love that you're doing that. You're constantly improving it, which is part of your unique ability too, is to constantly improve things and make them better. And I think that people will ask me sometimes, does your unique ability change? And my shorter answer is no. So I'm, you know, you're not going to stop being a learner. You're not yeah. going to stop being a problem solver. You know, I'm not going to stop organizing and, um, but what you know, I maximizing. do, but what will change is what I will do. Well, the activities that you Correct. apply that to, will definitely change mm -hmm. and will evolve and grow and expand. Like maybe you'll work with higher level clients mm -hmm. or you're going to apply it to totally different new arenas, but you're under, as you're understanding, as you're using your talents more and more, you also become more aware and you tune into more of those nuances like you're talking about mm -hmm. and you get more specific about, Oh, well, actually, you know what, maybe there's a whole part that you missed, you know, when you first wrote your unique your yep. habits down. So you want to add that in, or maybe there's parts you want to take out and you're like, actually, it's not really that it's more like this. Because usually we, we don't have an awareness of our unique ability. I still meet with people who are very successful entrepreneurs 
and they don't know that they that what they're doing is unique yeah. really they just think it's them being them they don't understand that other people can't see their visions that they see and solve the problems that they can solve they just it, take it for granted and the key word you used there was awareness you know on yeah. me i'm like this is the big word for me is awareness because awareness is applying knowledge so once you're aware of your unique ability and your best habits, you're able to see stuff more clearer. And if you share it with other people, they're like, I even have my team going, what are you doing that for? That's not your ability. Stop it. Yeah. That's I'm right. complicating it. So yeah, we want to have people like that around us, by the way, who say, yeah. wait a minute, Julia, stay in your lane. Andre, stay in your lane. Yeah. That's not here. Let me take that off your plate. That's not your unique. That's what a great team will do. And they that's my there. unique ability. Let me do it. Stay yes, away. exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. And then then you work in teamwork together. So yeah, I, I love to go deep with people. And I know you and I share our passion for understanding people's uniqueness. So um, yeah, I thought today we could look at a couple of your best habits, I can read them out so people know yeah. what they are. And then we can I can ask you a few questions about what does that mean, actually, and, and I do want to give credit to Margot one of our amazing team members who's been with strategic coach for many years. And, and we, we always post at our company, we post our 10 best habits and then our bottom line unique ability statement outside our offices. And um, she's, she saw one day people's um, unique ability on their doors. And she's like, well, that's great. That's from your perspective, but how do I know as your teammate, how to work with you? You know, how oh. do I use those best habits mm -hmm. or, you know, how do I share mine with my team leader so that my team leader knows how to use me in the best possible way? I thought, well, that's a genius idea. Let's, let's do that. So for a few of us in the company, it, you know, I've kind of nicknamed it the unique ability decoder because we're decoding it and translating it so that other people can understand it and better use you and your talents. So that's kind of what I wanted to get into today with you on a few of your amazing brilliant talents margo who's margo who let's get the margo you margo you she's she's a an amazing i can't she's she's brilliant she has many different roles she's an amazing photographer videographer um technologist she's i can't even list all the things that she does yeah so that that's uh that's an amazing thing because i never thought of it that way where i know my unique ability i shared it but how do they use it to their benefit and their success? Um, again, I've seen it from both sides of the fence. I got, we got clarity. This is how I do it, people. But how can I best use it? I like that. I really like that. All right. Yeah. And, and sometimes there are a few, you know, heads up. Uh, you're going to see me do this, everybody. <laughs> so, yep. you know, incoming or, you know, here's what will help, you know, don't ask me for this kind of thing, but come to me for this, you know, use me for this, but not for that. I know my sister, Shannon, that you, you guys just did a great couple podcasts on wise minds and uh, there, you know, she loves quick bottom line mm -hmm. solutions, right? So if you need a quick strategy, you go to Shannon. Now I would come to you for a different thing, a different type of strategy, a different type of solution. So the more fine tuned you are in how other people can use you, you know, the better results you're going to get, the, the better, you know, you're just mm -hmm. going to, it's going to be better for everybody. Yep. All right. Should we jump in? Jump in. You're in charge. Right. You're the guest All right. host. Andre, my relentless learner friend. Okay. I'm going to read your best habits. So this is, these are Andre's words describing uh, his amazing ability to learn. So Andre says, the day I stop learning is the day I die. I need to learn new capabilities to stay motivated, interested, creative, and to improve myself and grow. The steeper the learning curve, the better. I hyper-focus to absorb a large amount of data quickly, simplify the facts for you, and calm your fears of the unknown. So first of all, I just want to acknowledge that is a very powerful ability. <laughs> I do not have that ability. I'm telling you right now. And a lot of people don't. And I know Andre is probably like, what's wrong with people? Why don't they love to learn? <laughs> yeah. Why can't they handle it? Why don't they just learn it? Here, Julia, I'll just send you the link. You can learn it yourself. I am not motivated to learn in the way that you are. And I cannot, my brain cannot handle. I mean, I, I look at your reports and everything, and I can see so many different elements of you in this one best habit that you have you know, you are the expert in the areas that you really care about. Do you like being known as the expert? Yeah, I need to be because it's the yeah. only way I want to figure it out a hundred percent. And then just to go on based on what you said as entrepreneurs to the listener, like, like Julia said, like, why can't everyone just figure it out? It's easy, but that's the reason people come to us is because we provide those shortcuts and that. And so me, for me is like, that. Nah, now I 
part of this podcast. I'm just bringing on a lot of information for everyone and you guys can take whatever you want because I'm absorbing a lot and then reframe it for everyone else in smaller pieces. For and, which we are very grateful oh, because I cannot do that. And here's a tip. Here's a tip. When you're frustrated that someone else can't do what you do, that's a clue that it's your unique ability. And so you uh -huh. can flip your mindset right at that. I had a client come once he came, he was so frustrated with his team. He's like, why don't they just do this? It's so easy. It's so simple. I'm going to give them all my activities and let them do them. Meanwhile, the team looked at the list of activities and they're like, we can't do that. <laughs> That's your unique ability, not ours. He thought he was giving them the easy stuff because to him, it was easy. Right. So, but really what he got out of the session was being less frustrated with people. So you got to flip your mindset into like, Hey, wow, lucky for me, here's an opportunity for me to add value. I'm right. needed here. I'm useful here. You know, we yeah. all like to be useful, I think in some way, shape or and form. I think you got a good point. If it feels easy and everyone should figure it out, that's your unique yep. ability. And that's the value you bring to your clients and to your team. Yes. So about this learning thing, I was doing a big house cleanup about a year ago and I found stuff from grade school. Yes. And it was a coat of arms, uh, art, coat of arms, art project. And the motto on the bottom, learn as much as I can. Brilliant. This stuff is factory installed, Andre, since we're yeah. kids, you know, that's when really, I started believing you when I saw that. It really is. You look <laughs> back at my report card, you'll see how responsible yeah. I was. You'll see how organized I was. It was from a young age. I was helping a little girl down the street from a very young age with her work, with her schoolwork. Um, so I can see so much strength in here. I see you're, you're wanting to give us confidence. I can see your self-assurance strength in here. I can see your simplifying in here. I can see your one print, which is all about getting better. I mean, I don't need to go into all your assessments. Yeah. So my questions for you around this, you know, basically how do we, how can we best use your learning ability? What do we need to know about this? If I'm coming to you and wanting to learn from you, what, you know, what kind of person would you best want to interact with with this learning ability you know who, someone who, who wants to learn use? someone yeah. who so wants to all, learn something yeah so you need and, a keen someone who's inquisitive someone who's curious who yeah. wants to learn they if, want to improve if it's something that i already know if it's yes. something i already know i need someone to want to learn more because maybe they'll ask a question i don't know i want to learn it and that will then stimulate your learner again and you and, will and eagerly go oh, and learn it it's not eagerly i'll be head down ass up and just do it right? Until yeah, I get exactly. the solution. I'm but, just saying that because I'm not eager in that, no. in that domain. But so. on the flip side, when I started my engineering company, why did I get into these niche markets that there's no real course or books about? It was because right. I was learning. I yes. go to job sites, construction sites. I was just thinking, I'm just working with people's abilities and knowledge. How would you do it when I didn't know? But that was me wanting to learn how things were done. So you need a sort of novel area. And this is something too, if this is not happening for you, if you are not challenging yourself with new learning, you're not, you're a grumpy guy. Oh yeah, that's COVID. I was, I learned zero over COVID and I finally realized it later that now I'm back to learning. I'm forcing myself to just learn. I don't care what I'm learning. Actually, as long as I'm learning is key. So part of our managing our unique ability and managing ourselves is making sure we're feeding and watering each one of these best habits. So if you're feeling off one day, you just look, pull out your unique ability, take a look, which area am I not giving some love to, right? Right. And I'm finding that as long as I'm sticking to my unique ability, my best habits, I'm not having an issue trying to find interest in doing things. I can hyper-focus easily because I'm motivated internally because yeah. my best habits are tickled yeah. and I'm actively trying to, to stay in that lane. Beautiful. And so my theory of unique ability is we're the way we create value for other people is we help them be more like us. So when you're, when I'm listening to your podcast, which I do on my walks at lunch, I'm learning. So I'm, I'm borrowing your learning ability and your passion for learning and your learning strength. And I'm learning now I'm mm. doing it from a different motivation because I want to maximize things and get better and prove myself and then I also want to be a better coach for people. So the more I know, I know I'll listen to something that I'll then use in my coaching session invariably the next day. It always happens that way. Universe sort of delivers some kind of interesting tidbit for me. I, yeah. So I become more of a learner, but I'm you're in a way a shortcut. I just thought of this. You're a shortcut to me to help me learn because I'm not going to go do all that reading right. and that learning. Yeah. I, I can't. I don't, I won't. And and you bring up the point about you're doing it for your purposes. And I think yes. a lot of us misunderstand that, that my purpose for doing it's not the same as everyone else's and I can't push that. 
So if, if we identify what their purpose is and their reason, like even Dan Sullivan says, he goes, everyone has their own motivations to do things. You're just lucky to be there. Some I'm paraphrasing. So that's right. Yep, what, exactly. People have their figure, own reasons. Right. So if you can figure out that you're there for their reasons, you get a lot more successful. And then you just summarize that very well. And a lot of your client, your clients are kind of like my clients, highly successful entrepreneurs. And for you in the ADHD range, they want to be more successful. They want to be better entrepreneurs. They want more revenue. They want more fun. They want more success. They want more yeah. enjoyment. They want constant and improvement. So they don't have the time to research to find out all the yeah, shortcuts. They don't and, have an eight fact finder. They're not going to go in and do the kind of research and get into the specifics and analyze that you're so analytical. You, you can sift through all of this stuff. They don't have your brain. So you're, you become this shortcut for them. And every one of your podcast episodes is another new learning mm -hmm. for us to use whatever way we wish. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Awesome. I anything didn't realize else, that. Thank you. Anything else we should know about, like if I'm even your family or your friends, or what do we need to know about dealing with your learning or well, using you, your learning? You can, send me down, you can send me down a rabbit hole by learning something that's not really important to you. Mm. so if you decide to just say hey do you know about this and you like you know i might interpret it as oh you want to know it i'll research it and then later on it's like yeah I, whatever oh so heads up be careful everybody don't just off the cuff mention something to andre without prefacing it like hey andre right. don't go down this rabbit hole <laughs> or right. please you know do go down this rabbit hole because i really care about it so it's kind of yeah that i can relate from a different angle on that so that's a really good that's a really good thing for us to know and then also for you to know maybe there's a question you ask before you go down the rabbit hole you know yeah, is and it's an awareness you really on, care about yeah right it's an awareness on both sides yes not absolutely. even check we can in. help you right and then to me it checks in for me do i really want to learn that if i don't then is it something that's good for the company is it good for that person then those it's more of a conversation with me and then yeah, it's more like, you know, is that really you really, you want to know? No, I don't. Okay, now I can check it off and off we go. Your willingness is appreciated, but we better be careful we don't overuse it or send it down the wrong yeah. place. Awesome. All right, let's look at another one here. Let's look at your impulsive thinker, which is perfect for this podcast. So you say, as I listen, my impulsivity and racing mind, here's things that are missing. And see, I see holes many miss. Well, that's valuable. This ability is effective and efficient when we sit together and talk to solve complex problems or concepts. It surprises me when the proper solution shoots out of my mouth as if I already put in a great deal of thought. It takes at least one other to be involved to engage the superpower. That is really key, first of all, that you need someone almost to be in collaboration with or this yeah. superpower doesn't kick in. So Correct. So that's one one tip for, for you and for everyone else, right? And so if I have, the other thing that stands out for me is that it has to be a complex problem. Yes. If it's what's... simple, what happens? Are you bored, frustrated? I'm bored. It's, just, it's already figured out. Most people should know about by now. Or I've got it written down somewhere. You should have figured it out. So we need to put you in a situation where there isn't a solution, evident that hasn't been figured out yet that's got some complexity to it it's going to require learning because these are all tied together right um, yeah, that's a bit of a, my impulsive problem solver habit where i where other people have, i saw problems other people give up on yeah the impossible ones yeah if you like those. so like you like the what, challenge too right yeah, of that yeah i you can't be it. done uh, really i can find ways right uh, and the other thing too is like our, our motto with the engineering company is if more than one engineer says it can't be done you give us a call Perfect. We'll so you're the people out. to call yeah. when you can't sort something out. You're well, my the... big refinement over the last two years um, is that for me to be, I need to be intellectually interested as well. Yes. If I'm not intellectually interested, I have a hard time being interested and to get my brain kicked in. Yeah. Your gifted intelligence needs yeah. something that's going to challenge and push. Well, it that's why well. I like the complex stuff. Like awesome. I'm okay with the simple solution problem okay here here's my answer this is your direction but i don't want to discuss it more <laughs> make a decision you want to give it and that would be yeah. a, a something to coach your team on listen i'm going to be a quick decider i'm going to give you the answer and then go off and do it yeah. just listen to trust me right and i think people can trust you because you've done the learning you've got the knowledge you've got the specifics so when you do say something people can just go and run with it mm -hmm. they don't need to question it you're not going to want to have to justify it yeah. And what I like about the, the complex problems now involves interaction. 
And this was a big eye opener for me when I realized I needed someone like for me to get new ideas, I can't do it in my head. I needed yeah. someone else to just talk not that they pull it out. It just makes me talk out loud and the things just come out and it, it works out. That's why I, I kind of said, I'm always going to have a guest uh, solo. The only solos I'm going to do are the shorts. Yeah. Um, but because once it's, I got the idea, now I can go internally and work it out as a fact. So, this, so yeah. Where in your process do you need this conversation at the beginning? At the time, we need to find solutions and and identify the problem. And then you can go away after and do some internal if work? it requires in more in depth figuring out yeah but i'm at the point where i'm really good at i just want to solve this problem and not figure out the details anymore yeah and the then drawing. let someone else run with it let here's the solution yeah so that's another way to best use you use you yeah. to solve the problem get the answer and then let andre go and solve the next problem yeah. don't make him go into the the nitty gritty of yeah. the execution of it and everything because that's going to torture you yeah Right. You're not gonna and then what them. I start to do is I started to better utilize my team. So I got this idea. I think this is the solution, like the specific beam size. I'm not too sure, but can you prove to me that my idea works and then size it? Right. Perfect. And so then, they can and test it. And then when I work, I prefer working with groups of people because the interaction the discussion with the different people in the room with different with, you know, we can deal with one person's challenge. But I got a good way to bring people in, have the conversations going, and then tie all the loose ends and say, here, now I see it, but it's got to be talked and someone else involved. That's awesome. So you can connect all those dots. And you can, again, handle a lot of complexity. So having a group of people isn't going to bother you. In no. fact, that's going to feed you. It, it, the more, the better. The more, the better. Yeah. So that's great. Because again, not everybody can do that. Not everybody, I'm, I'm a one-on-one -on -one person. So if there's too much, I get overwhelmed. So for you, it's going to be the opposite. So that's a good thing for everyone else to know. Do you have uh, favorite problems that you like to solve other than the fact that they're complex? Or do you I, like to solve I tried to things? think about a pattern, but I'm really keen on people having their challenges, their personal challenges in the workplace around the ADHD or just any complex problem that can help someone move forward and have them improve. Yes. Like well, to me, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing that I've actually been doing that with my engineering clients for many years. I want to see them succeed by me helping them. I'm um, not mean being taken credit for everything. And even with my team members, I'm actually more concerned about helping them get better at what they're doing than actually the project and the client, you know? Yeah. And, and that was a big eye opener for me the last few years that, that's why I'm I'm out I'm out of engineering projects unless it's my specific unique expertise, um, but very small involvement now. But I'm more how can I help you guys get better by understanding your your unique abilities and then trying to stay in that lane. Helping people get better is a big huge part yeah. of your passion. Yes, and that's what you're doing through your podcasts and through your coaching. Awesome. Let's talk about another one. Uh, root cause inquiry. So you say, I naturally draw out the truth and essential facts by asking rapid fire, specific, probing, close-ended questions to target the root cause of a problem. My keen observation, listening, and questioning skills reveal patterns and paths missed by others that are clouded by induced complexity, motives, biases, misdirection, or deceit. Wow. So you got a really strong BS meter. I imagine. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no such things with smoke as mirror with me. There, I just see yeah. it. So you, you deal with reality, you deal with yeah. the actual facts and you get to that through your questioning. So how is someone on the other end, if I'm being questioned by you, what do I need to know if I'm going through this root cause inquiry? I mean, first of all, I love that you get to the root cause because that's how you actually solve the problem, right? Yes. And solve many symptoms at the same time. Right. So you want to hit multiple things. You don't want to just, yeah, yeah you want yeah. something, if you get to the root, then you can, and then I, you're it's also like, done and fixed. You don't have to yeah, keep going back to I, it. And I don't like band-aiding so band yeah. symptoms. So if we can get to no. root cause, then we got it fixed and move forward. So I feel like you're going to be looking really closely at me. You're going to be asking really good questions. You're going to be really listening and you're going to then be able to analyze whatever's going on and get to the truth. Yeah. And I think this is where my Asperger's kind of, complicates it a bit because it's they're very direct yeah people have accused me of being unemotional yeah but i'm just in fact finding mode i just want quick answers quick questions and it's quick 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 and then a lot of people actually think it's uh, they're always under a microscope 
So that would be a good little caveat statement or things for us to know. It's like, hey guys, I'm in my fact finding mode. I may come across as a little bit unemotional. I totally care about you and I care about the situation. That's why I'm doing this. This is my Asperger's kicking in. <clears throat> Pardon me. This yeah. is this is me getting the facts because once I get the facts, I'm going to be able to get to the root cause and we're going to be able to solve this. Yeah. And then this is where I say, okay, right now it's just yes or no answers, period. I don't want stories. I just don't want explanations. If I want more info, I will ask it. So, but right now it's answer what's asked. Do not provide extra info. Brilliant, brilliant coaching. Cause some people yeah. might assume you would want more information at this point, but you yeah. know exactly what you're looking for. So by you taking charge of that conversation, that inquiry and, and us just saying, okay, Andre, go for it. And yes, no, yes, no, yes, yeah. no, no big stories, no over explanation, whatever, then you can get what you need. You can get it faster. You're not going to be frustrated. We're going to get to the solution faster. So that's in my, to my benefit too, to know all that about you. That's, that's brilliant for people to know. And it's again, another incredible ability to be able to get to that truth and essential facts and the root cause. All right. These are awesome. Andre, yeah, do you are... want to have time for another one? Um, I think, do you want to do a couple more? If so, I think we'll have to come back. Um, can we touch think... on intuitive challenger just briefly? I'm wondering if we just, or you want to I do think we, one? You got a good, you got a good couple points here. I wanted to end with, and there's, okay, a few, there's a couple of things I wanted you to, to expand on, anyways. So I want to bring you back for a second one here. But what I want to the listeners to take away from this one here is, you know, the best habits is describes how you do things, and what you said earlier was when you are frustrated and that someone can't do it, that's your unique ability, and to think about that. So. What frustrates you that other people can't do? And then take a look at yourself and say, hey, I'm the only one that can do it. That's my value. And write those down. And then boring other people's unique habits for other people's purposes was a key one. So people boring, actually borrow your unique ability and habits, but for their purposes. And I thought that was a big eye opener. And I appreciate that. So we will have you back next week. We'll continue on with the... Um, the next two, but there's something else I want to talk more about this decoder thing and sure. how on the flip side, because we've always talked from the unique ability side from us understanding and sharing with others, but I want to talk more about the, from looking at it from the other side of the fence. So thanks again. And thank you to the listeners. We'll be back next week with Julia to continue this conversation. Thanks so much, Andre. Amazing.